Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today we are going to continue with our experimental studies relative to Kirchhoff's law in the infrared, focusing on something that Max Planck said. Max Planck defended Kirchhoff's law even though he recognized that the law became undefined when dealing with a perfect reflector due to division by zero. In fact, Planck ends up violating the first law of thermodynamics as you will learn in this video. But in dealing with Kirchhoff's law and the perfect reflector, Planck also made a very unusual statement in his classic text on the theory of heat radiation. He stated the following, hence in a vacuum bounded by totally reflecting walls any state of radiation may persist. But as soon as an arbitrary small quantity of matter is introduced into the vacuum, a stationary state of radiation is gradually established. Planck goes on, it is therefore possible to change a perfectly arbitrary radiation which exists at the start in an evacuated cavity with perfectly reflecting walls under consideration into black radiation by the introduction of a minute particle of carbon. Herein, the carbon particle exerts only a releasing action. From a thermodynamic point of view, this process is perfectly analogous since the time necessary for the process is not essential to the change produced by a minute spark in a quantity of oxyhydrogen gas or by a small drop of liquid in a quantity of supersaturated vapor. So let's see if adding a little piece of graphite to a cavity actually serves to make it black. In order to do our experiment, we will use the same approach as before as shown in these videos and in the accompanying manuscript linked below. This particular experiment was conducted on August 8, 2017. Again, a Compact Pro infrared camera from Seek Thermal compatible for Android phones was used to record the videos. A set of one quarter inch diameter holes was drilled into blocks of either graphite, brass or aluminum in order to create the cylindrical black bodies. The holes were made using a drill press within four hours of the experiment being performed. The one inch deep holes are on the left and the half inch deep holes are on the right. In order to add a small carbon particle into each cavity, two millimeter mechanical pencil refills were used. These are available from Menards, a popular building store in the central United States. A knife served to cut four pieces to a length of approximately half a centimeter. When the thermal imaging was done, the block was placed on the table and the camera was positioned directly over the block, a total of exactly 20 centimeters from the top of the table or 15 centimeters from the top of the blocks. We begin with the block assembly at room temperature. My hands were at the level of the cell phone, so there could be slight reflections of thermal photons from my body onto the block. Then an iron rod which had been heated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit is brought near the holes. Again, we see that the graphite holes stay black and the others get filled with radiation from the rod. At this point, the small graphite pieces are added into each of the reflecting holes. Now if you look carefully, you will notice that the effect of adding the graphite pieces is highly localized near these carbon particles. The graphite pieces are not acting as catalysts as Planck claimed, filling the cavity with black radiation. The result is strictly localized near the graphite. In fact, it is clear that the graphite pieces are actually doing work as expected, just like the graphite cavities but their ability to do so is highly limited by their size. Planck's claim that the introduction of a minute particle of carbon can have a catalytic action on the entire cavity is clearly false, and in fact, his claim can be demonstrated to violate the first law of thermodynamics, as we will soon see. 
the result we are witnessing is highly localized near the graphite particle as their position can be ascertained in some of the deeper cavities. It is not a matter of waiting a sufficient amount of time as Planck argued, it is a matter of work which is highly localized in one region of the cavity and which Planck failed to understand. I hope that you enjoyed this video demonstrating that Planck's claim relative to the carbon particle was simply false. He probably never tested the idea, for if he had, he would have realized that the addition of the particle into a perfectly reflecting cavity made it gray, not instantly black. Max Planck seems to have simply inferred the behavior he desired in order to justify Kirchhoff's law. But the fact remains that the radiation within a perfectly reflecting cavity is independent of the temperature of its walls. It depends on the radiation which is incident upon the cavity from the surroundings. The carbon particle acts to make the cavity gray, not black. Remember, leave a like and subscribe if you wish to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.